Good morning. Uh, I like that video. That was pretty awesome. Uh, you guys have an excellent uh, video team uh, and work that uh, quality, I would say, that definitely uh, could be used both here uh, and in your pursuits and careers to come. Uh, before I begin, uh, I just would like to extend a debt. Thank you to Pastor Polite, uh, Pastor Jose, and the university for having me come and speak uh, to you all today on the theme, World Changers Made Here. World Changers Made Here. Uh, before I get, begin, and before I speak a little bit to what uh, I do on a day-to-day -day basis, um, I always like to start um, with the word. And for me, uh, the best way, truthfully, when it comes to being a world changer, understanding how to be a better leader, and being able to make the best impact possible, uh, you've got to go to the word. And more importantly, uh, when you find yourself in a jam, when you are confused about what to do, where to go, I strongly encourage you to start with the word. And the reason I say so is because there has never been a time where I've opened it up and I haven't been able to find what I was looking for. And where I found kind of like my inspiration literally a few years ago started on a story about a man named Nehemiah, which is what we're going to be kind of like looking into and looking at what he was able to do and how he kind of got started helped me in a lot of ways figure out what I wanted to do, how I could do it, and ways to move forward. And so I preface that because maybe Nehemiah is your, uh, your person who you relate to. Maybe it's Joseph, maybe it's Moses, maybe it's Paul, Peter, Esther, Ruth, Noah. Uh, there's a host of stories and testimonies in the Bible uh, that we can go to and find kind of like wisdom, encouragement, and direction for ways that we should go. So with that said, um, if you have your Bibles with you, uh, if you have your app, uh, I would invite you to open it up real quick because we're going to go to the book of Nehemiah. Uh, we're going to start at chapter 2, and I will read in your hearing through verses 4. I'll give you just a quick second, but we are starting in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 2, uh, and I will start at verse 1. And I'll read in your hearing. And it came to pass in the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of Artaxerxes, the king, that wine was before him. And I took up the wine and gave it unto the king. Now I had not been before time sad in his presence. Wherefore the king said unto me, Why is thy countenance sad, seeing thou art not sick? This is nothing else but sorrow of the heart. Then I was very sore afraid, reading King James, and, I, and said unto the king, Nehemiah speaking, Let the king live forever. For why should not my countenance be sad when the city, the place of my father's sepulchres, lieth waste, and the gates thereof are consumed with fire? Then the king said unto me, catch this, for what dost thou make request? In other words, what is it that you want? So I prayed to the God of heaven. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, uh, but now I pray that we hear from you. Uh, this I ask through the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, again, uh, Pastor Pelaya, thank you for that introduction. Uh, my name is Maurice Valentine III, uh, but people call me Reese. Uh, I am a senior product marketing manager uh, at Sprint in a larger corporation. 
And to give you just a little bit more context for what I do, I currently sit on our acquisition marketing team. And what that means really is um, I go after new customers. So anyone in here who is not a Sprint customer, come talk to me after service today, and I will tell you all of the wonderful reasons why you should come and join Sprint. But more specifically than that, what I work on specifically we call is value-added services, which in other words is digital services. So I primarily work in the entertainment space of the business. So um, for those of you out there who have T-Mobile, you know, just to give you examples, you know that with T-Mobile, you get the opportunity to get a Netflix account. You all know that? All right, if I did, I just helped my competitor. <laughs> but if you come and join Sprint, we provide you with a free Hulu account. And what um, I do basically is work within uh, that kind of like overall space to create uh, offers that essentially uh, enhance the customer experience, uh, but also entice people to go. And so uh, through the time that I've, that I've been there, uh, worked with, like he said um, earlier, Amazon, Spotify, Rock Nation, um, Netflix, HBO, Hulu, Showtime, uh, you know, the list goes on when it comes to, you know, kind of entertainment. And I want to take a quick commercial really quick because we're talking under the theme, World Changers Made Here. Uh, several years ago, um, I got an opportunity to work with a gaming product uh, by a company called Niantic. Um, and we were up in Seattle. And at the time, um, the company was going through this entire uh, surge of success because they had a game called Pokemon Go. I don't know if any of you all remember that game, but at the time, everyone was playing this game. And so I was at Seattle, sitting at this table, around um, with a host of all of these people, and what made it really, really interesting was the people who created this game came over from Google. And in addition to coming over from Google, they were the, both the creators and the people who worked on Google Maps. And if you're familiar with the Pokemon Go game, it's really just a geolocation game where you move around, go different places, and it's AR, and you find characters. And they essentially took Google Maps and essentially turned it kind of like into a game. And so under, as we talk about the theme, world changes made here, you know, I'm sitting at the table at this awe saying, wow, like, you know, who hasn't used Google Maps? And at the time, who's not playing, you know, Pokemon Go? And as we had, the day was going on, someone, uh, we reached the lunchtime, and someone said to me, where did you go to school? And I'm going to be honest with you. I got shy. I got really nervous. I started to become self-conscious. Because if you know anything about Google, if you work there, you've probably gone to Stanford or Harvard or MIT or whatever the case might be. All of these higher academic institutions is the dossier for many of the people who are in the room. And so the question gets asked me, where did you go to school? And I'm going to be honest with you. I skirted the question because I didn't feel like I deserved to be, the table, uh, be at the table, which is interesting because we'll get more into the story. God puts us in places where he wants us to make an impact, where he wants us to make a change, and it didn't matter the path that I took. At the end of the day, he had me at the same table, but it myself felt, ah, oh, man, I can't tell them I went to a Christian Adventist school that they've never, ever heard of before. But, uh, and the reason I tell you this is because uh, this is several months later, a few months later, we all got together, we were meeting, uh, we were working on, again, some other project, and um, the question came up again. They said, no, seriously, where did you go to school? And I was like, I went to Adventist, you know, uh, 
college and, you know, kind of school and stuff like that. And I was thinking, in that moment, they're going to say, get out of here. You don't deserve to, you know, be here. And it was very interesting because this is exactly what happened. I kid you not. The young lady turns, uh, says, um, oh, wow. She said, if anything, the reason I keep have asked you that and I asked you that before isn't, uh, you know, because of that. It's because I'm trying to figure out why you aren't out here with all of us. So let me just take a quick pause and just say that world changers can be made here because while the world and many of these higher uh, institutions focus on academics uh, and knowledge, the school that you're at right here, right now, number one priority is God and faith in him. So there is no higher power, no higher intellect, no higher source uh, that we can be equipped with when it comes to what we need to do to go out and be world changers here. Um, and as much as I would like to kind of continue to tell you all, um, you know, that I do on a day-to-day -day basis, that's not really why I came all the way out here, freezing as it is. Now, if you have questions or uh, want to speak to me about anything, um, I am more than happy to reach out, help you out. Uh, Sprint actually is located in the whole, uh, the greater Kansas City area. Go Chiefs. So any questions that you all have, I'm more than willing to help you unless it has anything to do with a coin flip in overtime. I don't want to talk about that. But anything else, I am here for to, uh, to help you out, and we can kind of go from there. Uh, but the reason that I came here isn't to talk about what I do on my laptop and what I do on my phone to, on a day-to-day -day basis, because at the end of the day, that is not my purpose. And I think it's important for you all to understand this as we go back to the story of Nehemiah, because I need you to understand something about his story as we just briefly read a couple of verses. Nehemiah was the king's cupbearer. Uh, and at the time, that was a position of high authority, high trust. Um, that he was in proximity to the king, not just the king, King Artaxerxes, uh, not just the king, but part of the largest existent empire in the then known world. Nehemiah held a powerful position um, within that kingdom. But what's so interesting, getting back to purpose uh, versus what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, is once we get out of the first couple of chapters, that's never ever mentioned ever again. Which further goes to show it's not about what you do day to day, uh, God wants us to first and foremost make sure that we are fulfilling our purpose. Really quick, uh, just because uh, I have always been fascinated about this, there's a story um, in Matthew, starting at 24, where the disciples come to Jesus, and they ask him, and they say, you know, tell us about the end of times. What's going to happen? What's going to be the result? And what's really, really interesting is Jesus promptly turns around and starts to tell them, this is exactly what's going to happen at the end of times. But then uh, it gets interesting, because after he concludes, he tells three stories. Uh, the first story he tells is a story of uh, the five wise and the five foolish virgins. And what's so powerful about that story is it concludes, obviously, with the bridegroom coming back, and the question is, are you ready? And the power in that story is... Uh, we learn from the oil what we need to do to be spiritually ready for when Jesus comes back. So not only does Jesus say, hey, this is what's going to happen in the future, but he tells the story of here's how you need to be spiritually ready. Then he tells a second story, my favorite, parable of the talents, where, again, at the end of the story, someone returns and they're held to be accountable or, or, um, of what they've done. This speaks to what we are supposed to do on a daily basis, what is uh, what we are supposed to be held accountable for. But then he tells a third story. And what's interesting about this story is it's actually not a parable at all. The first two stories were parables. This one is actually reality. And what he tells is the story of when, this, um, when he returns, the people are going to be separated by sheep and goats. And what's powerful about this story is they're not separated based upon 
who was good or who was bad. They're not separated based on who drank coffee or who didn't, who was at chapel or who wasn't. They're separated entirely upon how they took care and treated other people. And if you notice in the story, what's so significant, as I said, chapter 24, they ask Jesus about the end of times. He tells them. Chapter 25, Jesus tells those three stories. The next, very next chapter is the Last Supper. Before Jesus left this earth, completed his mission, the last story he concluded with was how you treat one another, which is why purpose is so important, and that's why where we pick up in the story of Nehemiah, and we don't have time to do it, but if you look in chapter 1, Nehemiah was consumed with the purpose of his people. You see, this is why when we see issues in the world and challenges and struggles and stuff like that, you don't just look the other way. You don't see a dire situation and say, I'm too busy, or that's not my concern, or that's not my priority, or I shouldn't be interested in that. Because Nehemiah was the cupbearer to the king. He could have easily said, I'm not even really a Jew like the rest of those, or I live so far away from that, that doesn't impact me, or I'm too busy with affairs of an empire to concern myself with the few people who live uh, in this part of the world. And what's interesting, and really the only reason I brought notes to read to you, is he fasted in prayer. And he fasted and prayed for a time. And there's three points, really, that I want to kind of leave you with before it's all said and done. When it comes to your game plan of how you can be a world changer, that you can go out uh, and whatever you want to do and be successful. And the first one is by fasting and prayer. Uh, and it says, and I took this from um, Prophets and Kings, it says that Nehemiah resolved that if he could obtain the consent of the king and the necessary aid in procuring implements and material, he would himself undertake the task of rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. Now, really quick, what did I say that Nehemiah was? Nehemiah was a cupbearer. But even as a cupbearer, Nehemiah decided that he was going to become a general manager, a project manager, masonry, construction, all things that he had nothing to do with on a day-to-day -day basis. And the reason why I say you need to fast and pray is because maybe as you're sitting here right now, maybe you know what your major is. Maybe you're still trying to decide. Maybe you're in your major, but you don't know exactly what you want to do with that. Maybe you've already finished and you're still trying to figure it out. Maybe what you want to do has nothing to do with what you're doing right now at all. By fasting and praying, we can uh, get a better answer of how we can proceed and how we can make what come about come about. So I've come all the way here to let you know, don't be discouraged. Don't lose hope. Uh, if what you see uh, doesn't align with what you want, or if you cannot quite connect the dots, because ultimately it's faith. Because there is no logical reason for the king to get, invest hundreds of thousands of dollars into a building project led by someone who was a cupbearer. That makes no sense whatsoever. But it was through fasting and prayer that Nehemiah uh, set aside in his heart, and keep in mind, this was something that uh, he had held to himself, which was very interesting in the story, is, you know, he expresses this, but this isn't something that he's walking around, you know, saying. So it doesn't matter if uh, you're, you know, taking action right now, or whatever the case might be, or whether this is just something that is in your heart. Fasting and prayer is always the number one place kind of to start when it comes to kind of fulfilling your goal. Number two, you need to create a game plan. Um, really quick, because uh, I want to tell you a story when it comes to kind of like my 
um, my, my path into it. Uh, back in, it was probably like summer of 2015, um, I decided this is exactly uh, what I want to do. I want to become a product manager. And at the time, um, I, I wasn't. Um, I was an analyst at the time. And I had no idea how I was going to kind of get into this space. So the first thing I did was I said, well, uh, if I'm not in this space, maybe I should buy some books. So I got online. I started looking up what are books for, for you know, product managers. What are they reading? What are things like that? Started buying them from Amazon. Started reading from them and things of that nature. And then um, at the conclusion of the year, I decided to take a leap of faith. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go for it. And I started working um, with those who could better help and assist, you know, put my resume in a position that speaks to where I wanted to go and what I wanted to do. And the funny part was immediately I started to get, you know, reaction from recruiters and things of that nature reaching out to me about this or that or whatever. And at first, none of them worked out. So I had a passion or an interest, and I started to inquire, but still wasn't quite there. So then the next thing I said, okay, I got to go back to work. And I started looking up blogs. I started looking to see where the people that I wanted to associate with hung out. I started looking for meetups. Anytime around town people were gathering to talk about this, that, or the other, I wanted to kind of like be there. And through time, I began to pick up the lingo, and I became a product manager long before um, the opportunity actually was given to me. And the reason I actually say this is because when I finally became one, it took about eight months. And the reason that I say this is because it's important for you to understand when putting together your game plan, especially if you want to be uh, a world changer, is it's going to take time. We read in the story of Nehemiah verse, uh, in the chapter 1, and this is how we can tell, is it starts off and he specifically states it's one month. And when we come to chapter 2, he makes it very clear it's another month, which makes it very clear that time has gone by. And actually, more specifically, four months have gone by. So if you have a dream, if you have a goal, don't think that, okay, I have this, this is what I want to do, and tomorrow it's going to happen, because that's not necessarily how life works. And in fact, the reality is, is you may even become discouraged, which is where we find Nehemiah. You see, he was so distraught about how he was going to pursue his goal that even though he wasn't saying anything, it became evident on his face, which is how we lead to the situation where he's talking to the king. So, it's okay to be discouraged. It's okay to be disheartened. But just hang on and hold on. Because as we see in the story, your opportunity is going to come. The moment that you're hoping for or waiting for is just around the corner. The question becomes, are you ready? Are you ready for when that moment comes? When you are presented with a chance for you to fulfill uh, your purpose for that period or this goal or this dream, are you going to be ready? Which is where we pick up and where we find the story. So just to recap, because we just read it already, Nehemiah finds himself, you know, stressed out and frustrated, trying to figure out how he's going to fulfill this goal. And the king says to him, Nehemiah, what's up? You know, something's not right with you. In fact, he makes it very clear, you're not sick. I can see that. He says, and even more specifically, this is a sorrow of the heart, meaning this is something you're passionate about. This is something that you kind of care about. And what's interesting about this is Nehemiah says he becomes scared. Uh, I love the honesty that he shares with us, but he says he becomes sore afraid. Uh, and what is even more interesting as we look into the last verse, specifically in chapter 1, is Nehemiah has prayed and asked God for this opportunity. And you, I, and everyone in this room has something that maybe you've shared with others. 
maybe you haven't shared with someone else. Maybe it's just something on the back of your heart that you're praying for. If you hang on with faith, God is going to present that opportunity to you. There's a verse that says, let's not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And this day, months and months, days and days have gone by, and that opportunity now came for Nehemiah. And the king says to him, the king of this entire empire says, what do you want? And Nehemiah becomes scared. And it's important for us to talk about this, especially when it comes to the game plan, is because some of you in this room have dreams, some of you have big dreams, some of you have goals uh, and things that you want to accomplish. And for those of you who do have those and you do see them accomplished, it's time for you to start to dream bigger and start to think of goals and stuff that actually kind of scares you at what it's possible to accomplish. And the reason I say this is because there are two people, and it's very important that you get this, there's two people who are fully aware of what can be done through you when God gets his hands on you, when you fast and pray, when you create your game plan, and together you both go to work. The first one, obviously, is God. He's the one who makes the promises to us, and we can take those to the bank. We can count on those. But the second person is the devil. The devil knows exactly what God can do with you. And what's so powerful about that is the devil knows more than even you and I what God can truly do through us. So this is exactly what he does, and this is where we find Nehemiah. He makes you start to second guess. He makes you become scared. He makes you think, you know, do I really need to put myself out there like that? Do I really want this? Is this truly something that I want? All of a sudden, you get fearful. You get scared. You find yourself in stuff. Have you, there's something you may really, really want, but then when the moment comes, you're nervous. You're scared. You don't know what to do. And that's where we find, you know, Nehemiah. But I am here to let you know that those emotions come and you just need to push through that. When the opportunity presents itself, don't back down. Don't shy away. Don't be scared because God is with you and it doesn't matter what's going through your head, kind of like the story I told you earlier where I, all of a sudden I felt like I no longer deserve to be here. No, don't listen to that voice and just push for it. And what's powerful, especially when it comes to this story, is what name I does next. He answers the king's question with a question. A lot of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis comes down to negotiation and partnerships. Who, how is this going to work out for both sides? Who's going to pay for this? Who's going to pay for that? How in the end are we both going to earn value from this? And what's interesting is the king says, what do you want, um, when he asks him, why are you sad? Nehemiah's response is the household and the place of the uh, country that I'm from is in ruins. How can I not be sad? Which then flips it on the king, which now says to the king, okay, are you curious or uh, are you concerned or are you just curious? And we see in the story that the king makes it very clear he's not just curious, he's concerned. And so he says to him, what do you want? And I need to pause for you all to understand this because this is, uh, even though Nehemiah at this point has fasted and prayed, even though he has put together a game plan, which we'll talk about in a second, even though he knows exactly what it is that he wants from the king, the verse makes it very specific. He says, I stopped and I prayed. And so even though you may have the best of intentions, even though you may know exactly what you want, when that moment comes, point number three, season the opportunity, you need to still stop and pray. You need to still stop and make sure you are in full alignment. Because listen, when that opportunity comes, it's there and then it's gone. And you need to make the most of it when you find yourself in that situation. And that's exactly what Nehemiah did. He stopped 
and he, uh, he stopped, and then he prayed. And going back really quick to verse, picking up at verse 5, it says, And I said unto the king, If it please the king and thy servants, and I found favor in thy sight, that thou wouldst send me unto Judah, unto the city of my father's sepulcher, that I may build it. Basically, what Nehemiah said is, hey, listen, king, um, I'm not really passionate about what I'm doing right now. Uh, I have this side project that I would like to work on. Uh, I would like you to relieve me of my job right now so that I can go work on my passion project. Oh, and by the way, I need you to pay for the whole thing. Jesus says that some things only come about through prayer and fasting. This is one of those scenarios. Because as we go into the next verse, it says real quick, and slowly bring it to a close, And the king said unto me, queen also sitting beside him, For how long shall thy journey be? And when wilt thou return? And I'll pause real quick, is because um, as important as it is, and I said with step one, fasting and prayer, you have to have a game plan. It's not enough just to pray uh, and, you know, cry to God and do nothing else about it. Because we can see very clearly that when the king asked Nehemiah questions, Nehemiah had answers to those questions. I promise you when the king said, what do you want? And he said it, and then he started to ask the follow-up. He didn't say, I don't know. Or, I guess I haven't really thought about that. He had a game plan, and he was prepared to fulfill it. And even we can see at the end of the verse, it says, so it pleased the king to send me, uh, and I set a time. So, whatever it is that you want to do, however you see yourself being a world changer, or trying to figure that out, it's important to work through all the details and to put in the work, so that when the opportunity comes, you can speak to it, and like Nehemiah says, it pleases the king. The last thing to point out when it comes to seizing the opportunity is on top of that, you know, the king says, okay, you can do this. But if we read verses 7 and 8, it says, Moreover, I said unto the king, if it please the king, let letters be given to the governors beyond the river that they may convey me over till I come to Judah, and a letter unto Athos, the keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me timber to make beams for gates of the palace, which appertain to the house, and for the wall of the city, and for the house that I should enter into. And the king granted me according to the good hand of my God upon me. So not only did Nehemiah get before the most powerful ruler in existence and say, I need to take a leave from work. I need to work on this passion project. I need you to pay for the whole thing. He added on to it, which is why, you know, the Bible says, come boldly, before the throne, and that's why other verses say, ask and it shall be given to you. When you find yourself in your opportunity for your purpose, ask and ask again and ask again and ask again and ask again and ask again. again. Keep asking until eventually they say, okay, you've got enough to get started. Don't, don't stop because ultimately, and this is what's the most powerful thing, you're only going to get what you ask for. And if you don't ask for wherever you find yourself, that's exactly where you're going to be. And as we slowly, uh, you know, kind of bring this to a close, um, the king, as I said, agrees to let Nehemiah go uh, and fulfill his purpose, something that he fasted and prayed for, something that he game planned. And then lastly, um, something that when the opportunity came, he seized it. Uh, what a powerful story of how God um, can take whatever it is that we want or need and help us fulfill it. Um, so as I conclude, as we draw to, to a close, there's three requests that I kind of want to leave you all with. Because uh, I'd like to say a prayer as we come to a close. If you find yourself in a position where you need fasting and prayer, maybe you know what it is that you want. Maybe uh, you have figured it out, but you haven't told anyone yet. Maybe you have told someone and you're kind of stuck on what to do. 
raise your hand, and I will say a prayer for you. Second one, second one. Uh, keep, and keep those hands up. If you have fasted and prayed already, maybe you need help creating a game plan. Um, maybe you are in a situation where uh, you don't know exactly what it should look like on paper. Raise your hand as well, and I will say a prayer. And then last but not least, when it comes to seizing your opportunities, if you see, uh, find yourself in your place where, God, I know exactly what I want. I've created a game plan. Uh, I just need you to provide me with the opportunity. Stand, and I will say a prayer for you. And lastly, as I draw to the close, just really quick, if you heard this and you said, you know what, I'm not using God as I could be or um, I want him to add to his life, come down and um, I'll say a prayer for you as well. And we have our leadership down here to say a prayer with you as well. Uh, with that said, as we come to a close, uh, bow your heads. Heavenly Father, thank you so much uh, for the opportunities uh, that we, you give us if only we ask, Lord. Um, you created us uh, with a purpose, and it is your desire that we fulfill that purpose, for which is why you create us to exist. I pray for everyone that you see before me uh, as they go into fast and prayer, Lord. We know that things take time, and so I pray that you uh, start here right now with those and helping them figure out what their purpose is and how they can fulfill it. I pray for everyone's game plan, Lord, that they can put together a plan that when they go forth, like Nehemiah, it pleases the king and he approves for them to do it. And lastly, I pray for those, Lord, who maybe they're scared. Maybe uh, they know exactly what it is that they're supposed to do uh, and they just need uh, the opportunity uh, that for you to provide them to seize it. Uh, please prepare them for it, Lord. Please help them, uh, like Nehemiah, not to be scared. And um, lastly, Lord, we thank you for answering this prayer that we can, like Nehemiah, look back to specific dates and say, this is when God came through through us. Uh, we will begin praising you right now. Uh, we give you all the thanks, the honor, and the glory, and ask for the forgiveness of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.